Hi everyone and welcome to Eagle Creek Railroad. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I made a track cam using a Polaroid Cube Plus camera and a small tank car. Okay so a little bit of history about the camera. Um, this is a Polaroid Cube Plus. Uh, the difference between the standard Cube and this one is this one is Wi-Fi enabled. I gotta say I've had this for years. I've had this since my double O gauge layout days. Um, back then it worked really really well. But um, Polaroid stopped supporting the Cube um, via the App Store a long, long time ago. And as much as I've tried recently, I found it really, really difficult to get this to connect to my phone. Um, I've tried older versions of iOS. I've tried older phones. I've tried various bits and pieces, different fixes that have been described on the internet. Um, none of them worked. So I kind of shelved the idea. But then just, um, well, over the weekend, to be honest, I had another go. Uh, I dug out an old phone, which is... This one here, it's a really old iPhone. Um, I think it's an iPhone 5. Um, it's on charge at the moment. So I dug that out, uh, reconnected it to the Wi-Fi, downloaded the Cube app, and with a bit of fiddling and a bit of messing about, I actually managed to get the Cube to connect to it and to be able to see what's going on through the viewfinder. Uh, with my newer phone, um, with running the latest version of iOS, I could connect to the Cube but um, I couldn't see what was going on through the viewfinder, so the videos I was shooting were you know, a little bit of guesswork. Uh, it was as much of a surprise to me as it would have been to you guys, so I wasn't really keen with that. But um, yeah, a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of messing about, a little bit of tinkering, and I have managed to get it to work. Of course, having managed to get uh, the camera to work, I realised I needed a cam car. Um, I didn't want to go down the road of buying one just for a camera, so I decided to repurpose one of these. Um, this is one of the Kato uh, tank cars from the Kato Mixed Freight set. And I figured if I was going to convert anything, it was going to be one of these because it's really low to the ground. Once the tank is removed, it's almost like a flatbed car. So if any car was going to work, it was going to be this one. And it wouldn't need any cutting or chopping or any modification per se, as there's literally just one screw in the bottom which holds this onto the, the actual car itself. So... Join me now and I will show you exactly how I did it. Okay, so as I said, there's literally only one screw underneath holding the tank onto the car. So if we remove that now. This should now be loose. So that's the top part. So we move that to one side in a minute. The only thing you've got to be very careful of is the ladders just coming down the side there because they do secure into two little holes in the side. So we just need to make sure that those are loose just by pushing them out either side and very gently ease the tank off. So you can see the tank is intact. It's not broken or damaged in any way. So you can keep that safe to one side. And there's the fixing screw, which came out. So again, keep that to one side. And now what you're left with is this, which is basically a very flat tank car with a magnetic weight. Obviously it is metal, so it's magnetic. And that is absolutely spot on for the simple reason that the base of the cube is magnetic. This bit here is a magnet. So what should happen, although I need to be quite careful putting it together. So if I do it this way around, so we can get it in the center, well there you go. Absolutely solid look. That's not going anywhere at all. That is perfect absolutely perfect and there is what will be my cam car okay connecting to the cube cam is dead easy you just gotta hold the middle button down till you get the green light on the front like that and then if you hold the wi-fi button down like that you get a solid blue flash so then if we go uh, into the phone we're looking at Wi-Fi. Obviously, it's going to be different and um, for Android and anything like that. But as you can see, the cube comes up with its own Wi-Fi signal there. So we just connect to that. Like I said, I've had a lot of trouble with this because the cube is quite old technology now. Um, I don't know if you can even still purchase them. But for me, because I'd had one for so long, um, I really wanted to try and get it working again. So, right, that's connected there now. So we go to the app, which is there and connect to my cube 
And there you go. So you can see me there. Hello. And it's that easy. And as you can see, it shoots in 60 FPS at 1080p. Um, you can also shoot... Um, I'm trying to remember how it works. Oh, there we go. You can also shoot pictures with the camera, like that. So you can just take a photograph or shoot a video. And it's that easy. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'm going to put the cube on the track, um, give it a couple of laps and see how it runs. So I will catch you in a minute. Okay, so the cube is on the track. I've just got it hooked up um, behind the SD70 ACE 1989. And as you can see, if I bring this other phone into shot, that's the image from the cube. As I said, it does shoot in 60 FPS to 1080p. So it is pretty good. Um, one little thing I have noticed is that because of the play in the two trucks, um, the image is a little bit shaky. So I think possibly I need to sort of um, shore up the trucks a little bit to eliminate some of that play, purely because obviously the cube is quite big and it is quite weighty. Um, in double O, you know, obviously the, the cars are wider and you don't really notice it. But in N, obviously the cars are smaller. Um, but I think it's a little little issue, not one to really um, worry about. So I will just run it around quickly now um, to show you what the image is like. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So there's the image from the cube. I honestly don't think it's too bad. Obviously it doesn't look great phone on phone but um you know, i'm quite happy with that i think that's actually pretty good it is relatively stable there's not much shaking there there's more shaking in me than there is in the camera to be fair but i think that'll make for some really good running shots so yeah i'm really quite happy with that Okay, well I proved the concept, um, I think it will work. I'm gonna try shooting some actual videos with it now and see uh, what the images are like. Um, if I need to make any mods, I will come back and do that, but on the whole, I'm really pleased and I think it's gonna work absolutely splendidly. So yeah, thank you all very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Um, take care and I will catch you all in the next one. Cheers.